Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about curvilinear motion, and in particular, we'll be talking about curvilinear motion in its normal and tangential components. So here's the question. Let's say we've got a particle, and it's sweeping out a two-dimensional path according to the equations x is equal to 3t cubed plus 4t, and y is equal to 6t squared plus 10, where both x and y are in terms of meters, and we're asked to find the radius of curvature when t is equal to 3 seconds. Well, have a shot at this yourself first, and come back when you're done. That way it'll be easier for you to follow my steps one by one. Okay, well, your first objection to a problem like this might be finding the radius of curvature when our path is clearly not circular. And the trick to solving this is actually to plot our path on an axis just here. I'll call this my x-axis, and I'll call this my y-axis, and let's just plot what it looks like. Well, our, pl our plot actually looks something similar to this. I won't actually bother about plotting it exactly. But let's say it looks something like this. And let's say this is what our particle looks like at t, at t is equal to 3 seconds. Okay? Well, the trick to realizing what the radius of curvature is, is to realize that every continuous and differential path has small parts of it which can be viewed as parts of circles. So basically, this differential element right here can be viewed as just part of a much, much larger circle. So basically this component just here is just one small arc of a much larger circle with a radius r, which is what we're trying to evaluate. I hope that makes sense. I hope that, un that uh, makes you understand the intuition behind what we're trying to do. And now we can actually get involved with solving this type of problem. But before we do, let's just quickly tangential coordinate systems. We know in the tangential coordinate system, it'll be tangential to our path. So this will be t or this will be t. We don't know yet. We'll have to actually go through the velocity analysis to show us. right? And with our normal coordinate system, we know it'll look like this or look like this. It'll be normal to our tangential path. right? In order to find out whether our circle is actually above or below our curve, we actually need to go through um, the acceleration analysis. Okay, so let's, now enough, enough dawdling, let's actually solve this problem. Let's actually copy down our equations of motion. We know x is equal to 3t cubed plus 4t, and we know y is going to be equal to 6t squared plus 10. When you differentiate, you can find your velocity in your x direction, which is going to be equal to 9t squared plus 4. That's once you differentiate, which means your acceleration, once you differentiate once more, is just going to be equal to 18t, right? Now let's differentiate y over here to find our velocity in your y direction, vy. That's going to be equal to 12t. The 10 gets disappeared because you're differentiating constant. And ay is just going to be equal to 12. I hope that makes sense. So let's go through the velocity analysis now. Velocity, velocity analysis. Okay, well let's actually plot our xy coordinate system just here. This is going to be x and this is going to be y just here. We know that our velocity in our x direction at 3 seconds is going to be 9 times t, which is 3 squared plus 4. And when you plug that into your calculator, you're left with 9 times 9 plus 4, which is just 85 meters per second. Not only that, but we know vy is going to be equal to 12t, which is 12 times 3, which is just 36 meters per second. Right, so if I wanted to draw this somewhat to scale, I know our actual velocity vector would look something like this. Right? And um, the magnitude, or if you like, the distance of this vector um, can be calculated using Pythagoras. So let's do that. We know the magnitude of our velocity vector is just going to be equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared, which is going to be equal to the square root of 85 squared plus 36 squared which is 92.31 meters per second. That's the distance, that's the distance of this arrow right here. We also know that it can be broken down into both vertical components and horizontal components, which we already figured out. Vx is 85 meters per second and Vy is 36 meters per second. Okay? But that's not all we can figure out. We can also find out this angle here, which I'll call theta, using trigonometry. We know theta is going to be equal to inverse tan, inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, which is 36 over 85, which when you plug that into your calculator is inverse tan 36 divided by 85, which is 22.95 degrees. Okay, so now we have an understanding of our velocity of our particle at 3 seconds. Now let's do the acceleration analysis just to the right of that. Acceleration 
analysis. Okay, well, let's plot our x, y axis here again. Let's plot our x and y here. This is x, this is y. We know that our acceleration in our x direction at three seconds is going to be 18 times by your corresponding time, which is three, which when you plug that into your calculator is just 54 meters per second squared. A y is 12, and when you plug t is equal to three, you're just left with 12 meters per second squared. So if we want to draw the acceleration vector now, it'll look something like this. It'll look something like that. It'll be a little bit shallower than our velocity. Right? And this will be its y component just here, which I'll call a y, which we know is 12. And we'll have a horizontal component, a horizontal component, which will be 54 meters per second squared. And of course, we know the magnitude of our acceleration is going to be equal to the square root of ax squared plus a y squared, which when you plug that into your calculator is the square root of 54 squared plus 12 squared, which is 55.32 meters per second squared. Let's also define this variable here, beta, so we can have an understanding of the angle at which the acceleration vector is at from the horizontal. And we know beta is gonna be inverse tan, inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, so ay 12 over 54, which when you plug that into your calculator is 12 divided by 54, inverse tan that, and you're left with, and you're left with, so beta is going to be equal to 12.53 degrees. So the angle at which the acceleration vector is at is shallower than the velocity. Okay, now that we've got that sorted, let's actually do a normal and tangential coordinate system analysis. So NT analysis. And let's do that by first looking at our particle, which is just here. Let's actually redraw or superimpose our x-axis and y-axis on top of it, right? We know that if we were to draw our velocity analysis on it, our velocity vector, sorry, it will look something like this. This will be our velocity vector, and it will be at an angle of theta, which we calculated was roughly 23, just here. We'll also have our acceleration vector. I won't get the magnitudes right, that's not too important, but this is our acceleration vector, which is an angle beta from the horizontal, just there. Right? But there's one crucial bit of information we need to use. We know that our velocity vector is parallel to our tangential coordinate system. So that, and, and, and that's a really fancy way of saying that v is going to be equal to the magnitude of v times by et. And let me write that down for you. That just means your velocity is in the direction of your t coordinate system. And that should really meet your intuition too. I mean, let's scroll up so you can see this. If we were to look at our path just here, our velocity will be in this direction, which as you'd expect would be in the direction of your tangential coordinate system. I hope that makes sense. So let's scroll down once more. Now that we've gotten that sorted, we know that this right here is, is your tangential coordinate system T, which I'm drawing in orange which means that we can deconstruct our acceleration vector, not in terms in, of x and y, but now in terms of n and t. We can actually deconstruct it in terms of our tangential coordinate system. So this, is, this blue line, which I'm drawing just here, is our tangential coordinate. Uh, it's our tangential part of our acceleration. And this bit I'm drawing now is our normal component of our acceleration, a n. That's because we've proven that this must be our normal coordinate system just here. I hope that makes sense. There's a lot of colors and a lot of lines, but hopefully it'll be a little bit clearer when I just redraw this to the left. So let's, let's actually redraw this triangle just here, and what we're left with is it looks like this. This is a T, this is a N, of course at right angles, and this right here is your acceleration vector just there. Right? I'm only going to focus with magnitudes here, so this is going to be AT, this is going to be AN, and this right here is what we proved was 55.32 um, meters per second squared. We know this angle right here, we know this angle was just theta minus beta, which is going to be theta minus beta, and we can use trigonometry now to solve for AT and AN. We know that AN is going to be equal to 55.32 times by sine of theta minus beta, 
and we plug that into our calculator, we're left with 55.32 times sine 22.95 minus 12.53, and what you're left with is 10, 10 meters per second squared almost exactly. That's going to be a huge result, which we're going to use soon. Not only that, but we know that AT is going to be 55.32 times by cosine of theta minus beta, which when you plug into our calculator is equal to, is equal to 54.41 meters per second squared. That's your acceleration in your tangential direction, and this is your acceleration in your normal direction. We're almost done with this problem, guys. Just one more final step. Recall, recall from circular motion that the way we can describe a particle traveling around in a circular path is through its acceleration. We know the acceleration of a particle traveling around in a circular path is at in your tangential direction plus an in your normal direction. Haven't really said much in that step, but you can simplify that out into at times et, don't forget et is just your um, unit vector in your tangential direction, plus an, which is v squared on r en, right, where v is the magnitude of your velocity vector. Okay, so we, we know this right here is an, an, and we can equate the two now. We know that an now must be equal to v squared on r, okay? Fortunately, we've already calculated the magnitude of our velocity vector earlier, which we proved was 92.31 meters per second. So we can write that as r is going to be equal to 92.31 squared divided by an, which is 10. And when you plug that into your calculator, you're left with the radius of your circle must be equal to 92.31 squared divided by 10, which is 852 meters. And just before I end this video, I just want to talk about the intuition behind this once more. Basically, I've shown that this particle can be viewed as just part of a circular path, as just part of a circular path, which has a radius of 852 meters. Now, this is a very tough question. I'm glad we've solved it, but you really realize how important this is when we later develop equations using um, instantaneous centers of velocity. I hope that makes sense.